very happy. We're going to come out of order. I mean, uh, come out of <clears throat> order a little bit this evening. Um, we have the chief with us, and I promised him that I'd take him first so uh, he can um, get on with his business. So we're going to come out of order a little bit. We'll, we'll take um, citizens' participation after. First, may I have uh, the roll call, please? Sir, Mr. Chairman, four members of the Board of Selectmen are present. John Cronin is absent, and the interim town administrator is also with us. We are uh, extremely pleased as a board to have the chief with us, uh, Chief Stanley. He has, uh, in a very short period of time, in my personal opinion, um, done some wonderful things uh, at the department. And uh, I see there's plenty of representation from the department here tonight which I think is uh, a great thing. I think that one of the things that this board clearly as an agenda wishes to accomplish uh, with the help of the chief is to greatly um, not only improve um, the relationship between the Board of Selectmen and the Police Department, but improve the standing of the Police Department in every possible way that we can. Uh, and I think we have an opportunity with Chief Stanley to take advantage of his experience and skills to uh, help our police department uh, as much as possible. Um, uh, and we have already committed to the chief uh, that we will try and provide the resources any way we can uh, and whatever help that he needs <clears throat> to assist him in uh, creating uh, a good working environment at the police department where our police can feel um, uh, part of the community and um, uh, can do their jobs um, with confidence. So uh, I said a lot, Chief, I apologize, um, but why don't, you, uh, why don't you go ahead and you have the floor and feel free to take your time. First of all, uh, I'd like to thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the Board of Selectmen for giving me the opportunity to be here this evening. It was only a few short weeks ago that um, I came on board and I stood here and told you that uh, you had my word that I would not be simply a placeholder and sit back and keep the seat warm. That I was in fact going to work with the men and women of the Wareham Police Department, you as a board, and our town administrator, John St. Jeanette. Um, I have to tell you that you as a board, John as town administrator, and especially all the men and women of the Wareham Police Department have made that a very easy undertaking. I put together a, a slideshow, uh, basically a PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to go through it fairly rapidly, but I provided all of you with a copy of it as well, as well as Lieutenant Wallace and uh, our union president, George Dion. Um, and I look <laughs> forward to working with them as we review some of these things over the next few days. Uh, I must say that if it wasn't for the assistance of Bill Fillman, Officer Fillman, over this weekend, um, this would not have come out like it did. And I think it's a good working document as we move forward over the next few months as you prepare for a new police chief. First of all, the department structure is something that I'm still not comfortable putting down my opinion on, only because of the fact that the town had invested in November of 2002 with the Mass Municipal Association consulting recommendation. And I want to at least review that a little bit closer. So that is the one, and I wanted to hit it right away, that's the one area that I'm really not ready to discuss at this moment. How did I formulate some of the opinions and how did I get to the point where I am right now and what I've done over the last few weeks to help the men and women of the department? I had initial meetings and observations, formal and informal observations, as well as findings and problems is what we're going to talk about firsthand. Who did I speak to? Town Administrator, Board of Selectmen, Lieutenant Chuck Wallace, who, who I must say has been a chief cook and bottle washer at that department with so much on his plate, I don't know how he did it, and Chuck, my gratitude personally to you, and I'm sure the residents of this community and the police department for the work that you have done over so long under difficult circumstances. Thank you. Also, Union President, spoke with him, who's in charge of Patrolman and Sergeant Union. Communications Union President, individual staff members who made themselves available 
both at my request and on their own, coming into my office to speak to me at all hours of the day and night. Residents of the community, business owners, the school committee, I went before them and spoke to the school committee and the superintendent, who are charged with the responsibility of guarding our most precious assets, the children in this town. Supervisor staff meetings, we'll talk about some of those issues. Citizen groups, which I can't say enough about, both Crime Watch and CAPS. Both of them, we'll go into them as we go along, and also the news media, who has a hand in the future of the Wareham Police Department in this community. My findings, the staff was hungry for change. The staff really wanted that. So many people came to me with ideas and wanted to step forward into leadership roles within the police department. You as a community are so well off you have no idea the individual talent in that police department willing to step forward and take on responsibility. All they want to do is be heard and step forward in whatever they have for a, for a desire. They want to be able to explore that and work on it. This isn't a dress rehearsal. We only have one life to live. My job is to make sure that I give them that opportunity to step forward. I found that they maintained a good attitude under difficult circumstances over the last several months. That they were concerned about the Wareham Police Department image. They maintained a tremendous work ethic and they had pride, integrity, and they are courageous. The reason I say they're courageous is this town is 40 square miles and is a difficult community to police, yet they have continuously maintained their courage walking into situations where two officers or three officers are needed, and they did it alone. What were the problems I found, initial problems? Again, not a fault of the rank and file. There was a lack of communications within and outside of the Wareham Police Department. There was a lack of problem solving. All too often I heard, yeah, we know that's a problem. And when I asked what did we do about it, I was met with silence. A lack of a clear direction as an organization and a lack of leadership. That's where we had the problems. Communications, inside and outside Wareham as well as defined. What is communications? The imparting or interchange of thoughts, opinions, everyone has opinions, no one's opinion is wrong, it's their opinion. Opinions or information by speech, writing, or signs. Inside Wareham Police Department, how did I combat that? First thing I did was put up an internal formal memo system. Chiefs memos, training memos, personnel memos, detective memos so that we could maintain, and I promised the board that we would maintain a transparent organization. So that decision making, which affects the lives of not only our residents, but in particular the men and women on the Wareham Police Department, we wanted to make sure that, that they understood everything that was going on, that leadership wasn't in a vacuum, that they had their opinions and they counted and they could bring those opinions forward. And they did that consistently. I told, we had a staff meeting where the sergeants were brought in on September 18th. The last staff meeting was in 2003. 2003. I maintained an open door policy. I made myself available on all shifts, at all hours. I maintained a visible leadership with them. So if they felt comfortable as men and women, as my peers in law enforcement, to come forward to me with their issues. And I encouraged all officers to get involved, and get involved they did. Outside the Wareham Police Department, I made sure that I was able to speak with members of the media. We need some more visible public information officers so that we can get out there and get the work that we're doing out consistently so that members of the community realize the good work that these men and women are doing on a daily basis. And I've encouraged the officers to get out of their cruises and talk to citizens. And I don't care if one of their children are at a baseball game, and if they're on duty, pull the cruiser over, get out, turn on your portable radio, talk to the residents, and watch a couple of innings of your son's game or your daughter's game. Citizens want to understand that the police officers are truly partners in law enforcement, and partners with them. Almost like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, we had to look at 
the first things first. Their safety, the officer's safety came first. In my opinion, I had to deal with some of those issues first. I found exterior, exterior door issues, stair issues, utilization of space and general cleanup. Exterior door, the doors were rusted and shifted over time. They wouldn't lock. Push locks on the doors weren't working. Wide open access to the police station. Wide open access to the police station. I found an open door leading into the 911 and computer room. And I have to tell you, I was horrified. There was no change in the security locks as people came and went from the police department, as they retired, as we lost staff. No change in security locks. Repairs have been made and the lock code changed. Here's what we found. In fact, if you guys are going to the station, that lock code's changing this morning. You got tonight, that's it. <laughs> Look at the locking system, the way it's all been, all been rotted and so forth. The building's in tough shape. Doors that wouldn't close. That's the door now. That's the door before. Front stairs going into the station, closed, causing confusion. I spoke with the town administrator. We're working on that problem, and it's expensive to fix, but it's important for the image of the Wareham Police Department. The interior stairs right here, where our officers go in and out 24-7, with snow on their boots, with prisoners fighting, tape on the stairs, slippery, in an awful condition. Those repairs are scheduled for tomorrow. They've been stripped down now. The parts are in tomorrow. Utilization of space and general cleanup. There was a room downstairs that couldn't be used. It was full of junk. We made sure that we cleaned that out right away. We straightened that out. We put in new tables and chairs, training TV, the memo systems down there. We've assigned desks to our training coordinator, accreditation manager. Room to room interior cleanup underway, and there's a furnace problem also the schedule for repairs. There's the new training room in the Wareham Police Department that used to be full of junk, and there's the memo system so that now officers have a place to go and to interview people where we hold our Citizens Police Academy. They can have a little bit of pride in there. And there's never been a question or the idea of keeping us living in these kind of conditions to make sure that we, that the public understood and that the board understands that we need a new station is immaterial. There is no need. That is, that is a faulty way to move forward. We needed to clean that place, get it straightened up. We have a long way to go. The board, each and every one of them, and the town administrator, understands that we do, in fact, need a new building. And believe me, in these difficult times, it's tough, and they are working on it, and they are considering they're trying to find a way to make it work. We don't have to prove that. Training issues. I was shocked to find some of the training issues within the police station. The areas I'm going to concentrate are on firearm training, defensive driver training, specialized training, and in-service training. Firearms. We had a day shoot right away. Qualification for the state between September 8th and September 11th. The last time our officers qualified on the range was in 2006. Unheard of. Dangerous. Failure to protect lawsuit. Never mind the moral obligation we all have to the men and women wearing that badge. The fact remains they should have been trained and trained consistently like they were at one point in time. Night shoot with the combat shoot component. October 5th to October 9th. They went through that program also to get their blood rushing, to get blue lights going, to crawl around to be in a position where they're going to be if they're out there. After all, two-thirds of our officers work at night, correct? Patrol rifle training. I found patrol rifles in the station. They're not doing anybody any good in the station. Patrol rifles need to be out in the street. They need to be in the vehicles. If one of these guys walks into a woman, walks into a bad situation, they need the tools necessary. That training is scheduled for November in the process of having specials trained to the same standards as full-time officers for liability reasons. If you're the victim of a bad shoot, it really doesn't matter if that, gun came from, if that bullet came from my weapon or if it came to a summer special. And from a liability standpoint, you best believe the first thing they're going to be looking at is training records. Defensive driver training. Massachusetts Interlock Insurance Agency offers 
offers a training that reduces insurance costs for the town. We can possibly avoid tragedy, injury time. It's a major liability issue. And all officers are going to go as well as our special officers. And that's scheduled for January. Accident investigation training. Six weeks of intensive training. I have two officers assigned right now. Six weeks of intensive training. Not by some fly-by-night organization, but instead by the University of North Florida Institute of Police Technology and Training. Officer De Silva and Dicas are living at the Massachusetts State Police Academy in New Braintree. They're living there at no cost to the town of Wareham. It's a service offered. When they get done with this class, they will have national certification to investigate up to fatal motor vehicle accidents. And that course, believe me, they're here. They drove back here tonight for this. That course, they'll think they're back in college because that course is no easy matter. They're working diligently to get to those levels. Truck enforcement training. One of the first things I heard about that there were truck problems in town, and there are truck problems in town. When we attack the truck problem in town, we're going to do it legally. We're going to do it the right way. We're going to make sure we do it with the right equipment. And that money will come back to the town if, in fact, people are violating the law. So we're looking at that right now. That's on my schedule. Internal Affairs Unit. Sergeant Walchek is signed. He attended Roger Williams University School of Justice to make sure that when we do undertake an internal affair investigation, he will have the right certification. Lieutenant Wallace, by the way, is in fact certified, but again, Lieutenant Wallace has too much on his plate, and we need to separate some of those things to give him some assistance, and also to help generate um, personal growth on the part of our officers when they want it. Sexual assault investigator class, Detective Gerard, Korea. They attended 928 to uh, October 2nd. Grant writing school, Officer Philman. He went to grant writing school to find out where, in fact, we can find additional dollars to get to where we need because we know that all of our communities, and it gets worse every day, are facing fiscal crisis. Accountability and discipline. All sergeants are going to an accountability and discipline class being held in Tewksbury later this month so that they can, in fact, have the right tools they need to hold people accountable who work under their command. Miscellaneous training, fingerprints, risk management, radar instructor certification, firearm laws updates for the issuing authorities, and digital photography. In-service training is something that's required by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the right thing to do. In-service training. We currently lose an officer for a week off shift. Every, every year, one officer has to go. Every officer goes through this. We lose all those man hours. There's overtime created, created spread over six to seven months. Next year, I will set the groundwork so that our in-service training is going to be doing most of the work during January through March, our slow months, if we have any slow months in the Wareham Police Department. <laughs> all right? Our slow months, and boy, we have the stats to show that later on when we get to it. During those three months, we're going to put everyone through it. There's going to be a lot of online training, and we're going to have limited cost for the department budget so we can put more officers in the street. This is the course here that I'm really the most excited about. And for the first time, for the first time it's being offered, to my knowledge, up in this area. In fact, I'm sending some North Andover officers to this also. On December 3rd and 4th at Barnstable County Sheriff's Department in Bourne, all of our supervisors are going to go to a leadership class. It's going to talk about values, and it's going to talk about about how to work with people. Value-centered leadership. Look at the topic areas. It's going to be about leaders of character. Guiding people-centered organizations. That's the key. People-centered organizations. That's what we need to do. We're not robots. And neither are the men and women who are under the command of the leaders. They're going to, can you go back to that one, please? We're going to talk about, at the course, they're going to talk about leadership communication style, managing and facilitating communication, managing conflict, defining leaders of integrity. For the future of this town, one of the things I promised the Board of Selectmen was that we will make sure that we take the cream of the crop and get them prepared for leadership roles in this police department so that in the future, 
they will be ready to take on all the different positions within that department. Because in reality, what you want, what any community wants, people who went to school here, who grew up here, to move up through the ranks. When that time comes, and those people compete, who are within the Wareham Police Department, when they compete against other people for the job, because you as taxpayers deserve the best possible people taking over that department in leadership roles, you should demand it. You don't deserve it, you demand it. You make sure that the word gets out, you demand the proper leadership in there. We're going to prepare these people. We're going to make sure that they understand policy, practice, and they're going to bring ethics to life. Next. Equipment issues. It, you know, the same song and dance, it just keeps going. I see Mr. Slavin in the back of the room who's been working with me about some of the equipment issues. I have met with him so often, and he hears my pain, and he hears the pain of the officers in the police department, but at the same time, he has a responsibility to all of you citizens in this town to make sure that he watches the, the bottom line, watches the numbers. I've worked with him to come up with a plan on how to get us through this crisis to get these officers the tools they need to make sure they can perform the best possible job they can for all of you. So we'll go over some of these areas. Cruiser fleet, mobile computers, body armor, traffic vest, closed circuit TV. Cruiser fleet. It's a major officer safety issue. They're old, they're tired, and they're not safe, a lot of them. We have a couple of them off the road. Seems like every time I get a phone call from Lieutenant Wallace, he's having to pull another one off the street. It's a crisis. The mileage is very high. We also, in addition to mileage, you have to consider it's hard driving and idle time. 24-7, 40 square miles. It's a priority to take care of the marked units, not the unmarked. We have unmarked units, they're going to have to wait. I'm looking at a lease purchase program, and I've gotten word today, Lieutenant Wallace finally got an answer back, we have, in fact, gained some approval to involve ourselves the lease purchase. We're going to prepare the documents, we're going to sit down with the town administrator, and we're going to make that happen so the men and women have safe vehicles to drive. You can't see this too well, but this is about some of the mileages in the car. As of October 18th, 120. 138, 100 and, what's that supervisor vehicle, 180? 181. 181. 181. 11 out of the 20 patrol vehicles have over 100,000 pounds. 11 out of 20 over 100,000. Dangerous. Next. High mileage, outdated equipment. We're going to fix that. We're going to fix it from grants wherever we can. Mobile computers, it's an officer safety issue. They're dangerous mounts, not airbag safe. They're old, tired, poor quality. They're not capable of writing reports, and they must leave their sector and return to the station. When these officers have to leave their sector and return to the station, they're leaving you naked in your sector where you live, and they're leaving their brother and sister officers naked because they can't get to them in time. We, have a, we are so busy that people are working on, on reports in the station and can't get out there. We're fixing that right now. And again, through grants. This is what it looks like, and you can't see too well, but there's the computer in the officer's lap on a situation where our current computers, which aren't proper, they're outdated and dangerous. If an airbag goes off, they're going to blow into the officer. Especially when our summer specials are in town and are working with us, which they often do, it's a dangerous situation in that passenger seat. I've ridden in that passenger seat too, all too often, and I'll tell you something, it's not pleasant. This is, a, uh, this is a cruiser right now, car 11, which has the proper equipment in it, airbag safe. We have this on a test and evaluation from data 911, and this is what we're going to. Plenty of room <coughs> in the passenger seat. Between the airbags, the officer's safety is paramount. Body armor, another liability issue. Failure to protect lawsuit waiting to happen. Forgetting about having to look yourself in the mirror to realize one of your officers was shot and his body armor had expired. I've always felt in my capacity, whether it's leading the North Andover Police Department, leading the Wareham Police Department, or leading the Northeast Mass Law Enforcement Council SWAT Team or Tactical Unit, if I have to get up in the morning and shave to go to an officer's funeral, which is always a reality, I want to be able to look at that guy in the mirror and know that I did everything I possibly could 
to make sure I kept that officer safe. That's why this is here. I took immediate action to properly equip some of our officers. There's a five-year lifespan. Six officers were without certified vests when I arrived. That's been taken care of. Liability, fail to protect, problem addressed. Next. Traffic vest, another major liability issue. These officers are out there with vests that weren't certified. The vest laws have come in. You all see it when you're traveling on the highways. You see people, the construction workers had better vests than our guys did and our women. They have to have so many square inches by law now, an unfunded mandate by the way, um, they have to have vests that have a certain amount of coverage on them. We've taken care of that and to give them pride, these vests you'll see in the road now, they've each been issued one, it says Wareham Police right on it. It'll keep the officers safe, the motorists safe, the liability issue taken off the books, and again, grant funds. CCTV system within the police station, closed circuit television system, poor picture quality, lack of disk storage, interior and exterior camera system, expansion was needed. A vendor can't repair some of the things within the system due to the aid. We're working on updating the system right now and we're looking at grant funding to do it. Radio and data communications. All too often I heard from officers, we can't hear the station when they call us. We've had horror shows down in Onset. We've had horror shows here, horror shows there, where we tried to get help and we had to go to our cell phones. Can you imagine if you're in a fight, three, four on one, and you grab your radio and no one hears you? That one minute of terror seems like one hour of terror. I've been there and they've all been there. Well, I'll tell you. I had to research that and I wanted to make sure that what they were saying was correct and I did that. So I looked at exactly what the system was. Here is the town, here's the radio data communications, here's the talk back to the Wareham Police Department in town. The areas, go back one if you could, the areas of darker green are weak signals going back and forth to the station. The weak signals at best. The areas of blue are dead, dead man zones, literally and figuratively. But the, but the green areas that you see are in fact troubled areas. The radio frequencies aren't getting through. Now go to the other one if you could, Bill. There you are with the new system that's gonna be proposed. The new system we're gonna be proposing doesn't have just one repeater, it has two repeaters. It doesn't have just one satellite, it has about four or five satellites in it. And I've been guaranteed by Mr. Slavin personally that if he doesn't get the money, he'll take it out of his checkbook. <laughs> it, it, isn't that, you're on record, sir, is that correct? <laughs> and we all have your registration number. All right? That can't be fixed today. All right? That can't be fixed today. Hopefully at, in town meeting in the spring we can get to that. Policy and procedure development, one of my pet peeves. We needed to update the policy and procedure manual, job descriptions, and we needed to go forward to look at Massachusetts Police Accreditation Commission. Updated policies and procedures, rules and regulations for the government of the police department as promulgated pursuant to provisions of 4197 of the Massachusetts General Laws with the approval of the Board of Selectmen. This community is a 97A community. That means that your police chief, whether that police chief is civil service or non-civil service, that police chief has the responsibility and the direct control and management of his police department to develop policies and procedures. Not the Board of Selectmen, as seems to be out there with so many people that the Board of Selectmen writes the policy and procedures. That's not the case. By Massachusetts general laws, this town, the police chief prepares the policy and procedures. The police chief delivers them, as I did last night in North Andover, updating a few policies and procedures. I, I brought them forward to the Board of Selectmen. They had them for a week to review. We had a discussion last night in North Andover with a couple of new policies, and it's up to them to pass them. And if they don't take any action within 30 days, they go into law as far as the management of the police department goes. The police chief develops the policies and procedures. 
if in fact the Board of Selectmen were to develop a policy and procedure, I bet that I could speak to George and I could speak to others and we'd fill this room up a lot more than it is right now to make sure that the rules and regulations were promulgated from the Chief of Police. No clear policy and procedures in the Wareham Police Department, generic at best. No individual sign-off sheets for every one of them. I couldn't come up with a lot of them. No documentation that they were approved by the Board of Selectmen. For every policy and procedure in North Andrew, we have a staple document on it that's signed off by the Board with the day it was before the Board. No clear way of researching and cross-referencing. That causes confusion for the men and women of the department. The rules and regulation book's about that thick. Most of it's common sense. But at the same time, out of fairness, for every member in that department, they need a starting point. Last activity I found was 8096, Uniform Policy of Domestic Violence in 2002. There's a much newer one out there now. 2006, License to Carry Firearms. There was an issue that, that was the last one I really saw clearly. And survey of police officers found, and I spoke to a ton of them, that it was not a priority and there was nothing clear on them. Next slide. Job descriptions, old and outdated, generic and weak, need updates, and you can't hold people responsible without them. Massachusetts Police Accreditation Commission. It's a mechanism by which police departments strive to meet and maintain professional standards. The standards are established. They deal with critical areas of police management, operations, investigation, and technical support. There are 253 mandatory standards. There are 122 optional. You have to reach 65 of them, 65%. It's a voluntary process for police departments. It's self-initiated evaluation by outside agencies. And once achieved, you must maintain it. It doesn't go away. If you don't maintain it, it's gone. The standards are established for the profession by the profession. What does it do for us as an organization? It gains us recognition by other law enforcement agencies. It gives the officers pride. The officers should have pride, and you as a community should have pride in the officers for doing that. Decrease in liability costs. Easy to defend your agency in court actions and liability. The program orientation is beginning on October 22nd, and Sergeant Preston Urquhart, who is thrilled to be on the day shift now, off of the midnight shift, he has, he has smiled ear to ear to take on this responsibility. And uh, I have to thank him because I don't know if he knows what he's getting himself into, but I'm going to work with him, and he's been, he's been great. The Wareham Police Department application is being prepared now. Citizen group participation. Citizen group participation. It is an important component to successfully impl implement community policing philosophy. The community policing philosophy is, in fact, police officers, part of the community, working with you, the residents, in concert, to make this community the best it can be to live and work and raise our families. Without citizen participation, you've got nothing but an armed militia. We're lucky in Wareham. We have many people, many of you are here today. Crime Watch is here. CAPS is here. So many people have come to me and asked to be part of the police department, to assist the police department. Some of it needs work. It got off track. Everything seemed to get off track. We're honing it in. And I have the word of the boards of directors of both organizations that they're going to work with us. And that the police department, and the police department alone, through a staff meeting, is going to give a four-cornered document as to what is to be expected and how we can work with the community through citizen groups. And I look forward to that. By spring, um, you all have my word, that'll be front and center and over the winter so that when the flowers are coming up in the spring, everything's going the right way with citizen participation. Um, coordination of effort of all groups. We have to build an understanding and relations to welcome citizen involvement. We need and want help from the onset community crime watch as well as the citizen auxiliary patrol service. It's a topic of discussion for the next staff meeting. 
We'll meet with the group again soon. Union management relations. This has been a tough one. It was real tough. My first meeting with George was all about the health and welfare and protection of his membership. That's a lot to ask from a union president, huh? That he was actually, that's what he was looking for. I didn't get nickeled and dimed. I didn't get told about all sorts of problems. But instead, he stood tall, he addressed me, and he wanted to discuss some issues which were meat and potato issues. Not trying to take the new guy and slide anything un under the rug, but instead maintain professionalism, work with me, and made sure that he looked out for the interest, not of himself, but of the men and women who elected him to that position. And I thank you for that, George. I've had regular meetings with them. We each have our cell phone numbers. We talk to each other. We make sure that we have open communications. If he's not happy about an issue, he lets me know, and I do the same. And you know what? We haven't really had to have too many of those conversations. In fact, I don't know if we've had any of those conversations. We work together for the best interests of the men and women who wear the badge, and for ultimately the best interests of the residents of this town. Management issues center around staffing, and boy, here's a valid point there. Equipment, general safety of his membership. Issues of reasonable, and some issues are part of negotiations. When I asked John Sanjanette if I could sit in on negotiations, he allowed me to do that, and he was very good too. He told me, Rick, if you can get some of these things off the table, so that we can work closer with the union, do it, and we're working on that right now, and I thank you for that, John, as well. My opinion, it's a very good working relationship. Next. Major crime since August. This is unbelievable. Major crime since August. When I first heard I, was, I had an opportunity to get on the Cape and assist on a nice little Cape community, I said, this will be great. I'll go down there and, you know, maybe bring my golf clubs with me once in a while and so forth. Right. Take a look at this since August 3rd. Unarmed bank robbery, Citizens Bank. Indecent assault and battery and rape of a child. Armed robbery with a knife. Home invasion, assault and battery with dangerous weapon, Agawam Lakes. Stabbing, attempted murder and onset. September 1, civil rights crime, skinheads. I've never seen in 32 years anything like I saw when those officers dragged these two into the building. You've never seen anything like it. I've heard about the real skinheads. I've never seen one up front and personal. They did. And in fact, there was no doubt in my mind that if they didn't have proper backup on that night, tonight I would be standing here and we would have a standing moment of silence about one of our officers who would be dead. Because that no good piece of garbage had a shotgun and there was no doubt in my mind, if the odds were with them, would he use it on that officer that night. No doubt in my mind. But because they had proper backup, because these guys drove quickly to get there and back them up, that's why our officers are safe today. And then we all know about September 5th with the murder. We had another armed home invasion onset. Four suspects caught and arrested within 15 minutes. Next. Bomb scare, West Wareham. Homeless person behind Walmart beaten with a bat and stabbed. Male victim stabbed and robbed. There are more stabbings in this town, and we need to deal with some of it, and we'll get to that, how we're going to combat some of that. Here's the good point. The Wareham police identified and arrested suspects in eight of the 11 major crimes listed here. Most suspects arrested within 30 minutes or less. And the bank robber was caught in another town through our investigation and the work of our detectives. That is unbelievable. Commendations. We've had a, I've been lucky enough to be able to give out some commendations <coughs> to some of the officers, but you look at some of these things and what these guys and women have been commended for. And they should be commended for every day they're out there. I'm going to whip through this quickly so you can kind of see it. I'll hit a couple of highlights. Statistical summary. We had the murder. 175 drug offenses arrest. Robberies, 28. Look at these crimes. Weapons involved in offenses, 337. Next. Domestic assault and batteries, 30. Intoxicated persons, 173. Requests for medical assistance, over 2,000. Over 2,000. 
requests for medical assistance. These officers are getting there first and working on every one of our residents to keep them alive. That's a lot. And again, we keep going down. General calls for service, just general calls, 1,400. But look at this, building checks, over 8,000 building checks. So if any of you think that our officers aren't out there doing their job, I've got the data to prove you wrong. Over 8,000 building checks when they're out there. So the business owners in this town ought to feel good about that. Motor vehicle stops over 4,000. Citations, one fatality. Pedestrians injured. Motor vehicle action, 437 action reports, and they take a long time. 911 emergencies, over 2,000, almost 3,000. Telephone calls coming in, over 8,000. Total log entries, over 27,000 total log entries. Murph, I don't know how you do it. I know you're in there all the time, but I'll tell you, I don't know how you do it. Over 27,000 log entries. And he's not the fastest typer in the world either. <laughs> Next. Arrests, on scene arrests, 710. Warrants, 185. Summonses, protective custody. Total arrests brought into the station, over 1,500 this year. Think about that. And a lot of times, that is with only five people on the street covering 40 square miles. And a lot of these people don't go easy. Next. How are we going to combat crime in town? We have to look at a philosophy. We have to utilize all of our resources. We need to develop a code enforcement officer. And the code enforcement officer is a plan I'm going to bring forward to work with health department, building department, and so forth, where we're going to take the lead. We're going to get this officer the training he needs. We're going to take the lead, and we're going to look at some of these places in town that need to be shut down. And you've got some. They need to be shut down. They need to be boarded up, and they need to be bulldozed. Because this is a beautiful community, and you people don't deserve to have to look at some of that blight. There are ways to deal with it, and I guarantee you we're going to deal with it. The philosophy, community policing philosophy, department-wide. Broken windows theory. For those of you who don't know what a broken window theory is, it was developed by the New York City Police Department, Bill Bratton and Jack Maple. It has to do with the fact that if there's one broken window in a neighborhood, more will follow. So we can't allow the one broken window because you are, by tacit ignoring it, you are going to just allow that to continue and get worse. So we have to be aggressive about how we're going to handle quality of life issues in this community. We will not stand for narcotic violations and all they bring with them, because there's a lot more. It's the shoplifting. It's the rest of it that comes with narcotic violations to support their habits. It's the car breaks, the house breaks. We need to attack vehemently narcotic violations at all levels, not just the major traffickers, but street-level narcotic activity, which I've seen myself. And we will not let gang members infiltrate our community and affect our children's future. A lot of the recent issues that have taken place, the violence in this community, were gang related. Well, we're going to make sure that we put a stop to that. And we're going to make sure that we put a stop to it hard and fast. And maybe we don't have gangs floating around all the time in Wareham, but you know what? They're coming in. Well, they're not going to be welcome here, and we're going to find a home for them. Utilization of all of our resources. All hands on deck by Wareham Police Department full-time staff. They're ready, willing, able. Accept the offer of assistance by summer special staff. You know our summer specials have actually come forward and said, do me a favor, a lot of them, keep us on the list. Leave us on as specials, and we, we respect the union contract. We respect the fact that, that overtime gets distributed through the union by contractual agreement. We're not trying to affect that, but what we want to do is we want to make ourselves available for free free help to ride with the full-time members of the Wareham Police Department to give them added protection and safety and so that we can learn for our own futures. What kind of a deal is that? All right, you talk about a win-win for them and us as a community. We are gonna, we're working on that right now. I've sent that to John. John's worked on it with me. We're going to have summer specials riding. The command staff as well as the union have agreed as it, as it being a good move. 
The command staff wants to make sure, and rightfully so, that the officers in the street will accept that. So if Officer Rex wants someone to ride with him, he has to get his permission first and then the supervisor permission. And that's the only fair way. And that's what we're looking at, and that's what we're getting ready to undertake. And hopefully that'll be online by the end of this month. We're going to request assistance from our partners within the state and federal government where appropriate. I've already met with the Drug Enforcement Administration. We have one of our officers on the task force. We're going to be bringing in some federal agents to work with us to make sure that we attack some of these problems. We're going to utilize our energy of our citizen groups as our eyes and ears. That's already begun. And our citizens groups should be commended for bringing forward information to us in a confidential manner so that we can have a basis for our investigations that are ready to begin. We're going to support the new leadership in the Wareham Police Department Detective Division. In fact, Sergeant Jacinto was just promoted to uh, head of the Detective Division. He was put in that position. He's got a tough road ahead of him. I have a full plate I've handed him on these narcotic issues and so forth. He's ready for the challenge, and I thank you for that, Doug. And we're going to create a code enforcement officer. Next. A better and safer community would be the result with visible, sustainable changes in the quality of life when spring arrives. I promise you that when we get back here in the springtime, if I'm still with you, you're going to see a marked difference in the way the Wareham Police Department is out there, as well as in the quality of life of this community. And you're going to see some places boarded up, and you're going to see a lot of the lowlifes who find a home coming through this community are not welcome, and we're going to do something about them. I think it's important for me to thank a few people. No one person can do any of this. And I want to go through a couple of people. John Sanjanet, I have to thank you for your support throughout this process, uh, for your encouragement and support in the meetings we've had. I know you've been busy. You've always made yourself available. And for that, I appreciate it, sir. To the chairman and members of the Board of Selectmen, for the fact that they did not get involved one iota in trying to, trying to uh, steer me in any particular direction. There were men and women of their word. They told me, fix it. Make sure you worked it. Encourage the officers to get involved. Move the organization forward. Prepare the department for new leadership. Get us back on track. No political interference. Even though the naysayers who are out there say that there is political interference, I have not seen it. And I'll guarantee you one thing. If I did see it, I'd tell you. I have nothing to lose in this. Nothing. I'd tell you. And there isn't any of that. There's nothing but encouragement from every one of the members of the Board of Selectmen. There's nothing but, but accolades about this police department, and we're going to move it forward. Some of the people that I have to mention, Lieutenant Wallace, Executive Officer, I could not do this job 85 miles away from my home base and the responsibilities I have at home without the day-to-day -day cooperation and the day-to-day -day assistance of Chuck Wallace. Chuck, I am forever indebted for making this an easy process for me. I appreciate your efforts. You've been tremendous. You've got a real pulse on it. And I can't thank you enough for the work you do on a daily basis, keeping me up to date, and I mean that sincerely. Cassandra Cassidy. Where would I be without Cassandra, my administrative assistant? I don't have to worry about day-to-day -day things that are taking place in that office. She keeps me updated. Thank God for computers and thank God for Blackberries because I'll tell you, without that kind of stuff, it couldn't happen. Sergeant Glenn Gifford. He made the mistake of telling me he wouldn't mind getting involved in training. <laughs> Well, he got involved with both feet, and I'll tell you, he's been doing a tremendous job with it. Sergeant Jacinto, again, for the activities that you're willing to take on right now, I really appreciate it. Sergeant Urquhart, we talked about him, for the work he's going to do as accreditation manager. Sergeant Walter, Internal Affairs, Citizen Police Academy. That was Herbie Noble and John's brainchild. They came to me and said, we want to make sure that we open the doors up to the citizens of this town again and bring back the Citizens Police Academy. I didn't come up with that. They did. They made my life easy. I said, I don't have the time to deal with it. Can you guys run with it? Chief, that's all we want is your blessing. They ran with it, and they're doing a great job. And they're involving all the officers in the department in working with our residents. 
and we're going to have another one in the winter. George, President of our union, thank you for your support and the work that you've done, and keep focused at the most important things and not nickeling and diming us as we move forward through this process. And Bill, I'll tell you what, this came out great, this PowerPoint, but if it wasn't for Bill giving up his weekend, I knew I had a lot to do, I thought I could do it, I was behind the eight ball, and Bill, thank you so much for stepping forward, not only your general assistance with this, but your work with the grants and your photography expertise, I appreciate it. Most importantly, thank you to all the members of the Wareham Police Department for acceptance of change, the warm welcome, and the everyday professionalism. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much, Chief. <clears throat> that was an excellent presentation, well delivered, and uh, you've covered a tremendous uh, amount of ground. Um, I'll uh, open it to uh, board comments. Um, Mr. Chairman, through you to uh, members of the Wayham Police Department who are here today and your new leader, um, Chief Stanley, I'd like to thank you all for being here tonight. I think that this is a great part of moving Wareham forward. It's a, a piece that couldn't have happened without some change. Change is always difficult, and it sounds like we're moving in the right direction with the change, and appreciate you all for working with Chief Stanley. The board has taken a little bit of heat, as I know, know Mr. Sanjanette has, for hiring a part-timer. But from the sounds of it, it sounds like uh, Chief Stanley doesn't get any sleep, and he's not letting you get much sleep either. So um, thank you all for your efforts, and I appreciate the presentation tonight. I think the public was probably... I'm um, very enlightened if they were listening tonight, and um, carry on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I can only uh, echo what Jane said. Uh, unbelievable presentation. I know that uh, when we spoke, there were issues that I think we all raised, uh, the men and women of the force as well as the Board of Selectmen, and um, you've done a remarkable job of finding those issues and addressing so many of them and be in the process of addressing them. And I know that um, from talking to several of the officers, um, they are 100% behind you and they are as excited as you have um, portrayed them to be to get into this and everything. And, and all of you, really thank you for coming here. Thank you for supporting um, Chief Stanley. And um, I really hope that this is a, a, a step forward for where him, for all of us. Thank you. Thanks. Walter? I'd like to thank Chief Stanley for all the work that he's done and the men in blue to support him and the wonderful job you guys are doing for the town of Wareham. Thank you very much. Um, do any of the officers have uh, want to make a comment or on behalf of the officers, uh, Mr. Dion, perhaps? Sid, I don't mean to put you on the spot. It's up to you. <laughs> do you want I think he covered it. Okay. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> well, uh, well, in final remarks, and I will say that... Um, you know, I think it is um, uh, remarkable um, when you have a difference. What a difference uh, a motivated, um, trained, experienced, educated, uh, driven for success. Um, when you have that combination, uh, I, I think it speaks volumes about hopefully where we're, we're headed as a community in, in, in uh, not just with respect to the police, but um, all of the many departments um, that we uh, hope to see new blood and uh, a, a new direction as a community. Um, I think we can all feel tremendously good about our prospects as a community. Um, I will start the process of healing by uh, personally apologizing to the Wayne Police Department for any comments that I personally may have made um, either personally or as a member of this board, that might have caused um, either embarrassment or, um, uh, frankly, um, insults. Um, it was not my intention. I, uh, it is not that I don't care about good police work. I, I care very much about it, and that's why I felt it necessary to be uh, vocal uh, at times. Um, I hope that the differences that we may have had are behind us. 
I know this board, as a board, supports our police 100% because you do protect us as a community. And without uh, a good police department, there is no community. And I think the chief put it best um, in a number of ways. So I will um, thank you uh, personally and on behalf of the board for uh, your tremendous efforts already to this point. I know you don't have much time, so uh, you're on a mission, and the mission is um, very gratifying to all of us. So on behalf of the board, again, thank you, Chief, personally, and thank the Wareham Police Department um, for all that you do. It is a dangerous job. It is a thankless job. It is frustrating, and when you don't have proper equipment, a proper police station uh, facility, which I think... Um, one of the top priorities this board needs to start working on uh, with our finance committee and um, our town administrator is to start seeking um, redevelopment of that police station, either through bonding um, or other means. But I think it's absolutely necessary. I know the chief is trying to improve that station to make it livable and manageable, uh, but it is high time we had a new station, in my personal opinion. Uh, so with that said, um, I thank you all very much for attending. We're going to interview the three uh, uh, finalists for the position of town administrator at this point, uh, and you're all welcome to stay if you wish. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys.